scalar product. Scalar product of two vectors is also known as the dot product of the two vector. The name dot product is given because of the symbol we use between them. So A dot B, the scalar product of two vectors or the dot product of two vectors is A dot B is equal to mod A mod B cos theta. To see the diagram, you can see two vectors, both co-initial with O, point O. One is vector A, the other one is a vector B. And their product, if we take their product in such a way that, that we take cos of angle between them along with their moduli, then that becomes a dot product. So A dot B is mod A mod B cos theta. So the scalar product or the dot product of two vectors is product of their moduli multiplied with cos of angle between them and theta belongs to 0 to pi. If none of the angles is a 0 vector, then theta will be defined. And if at least one of the vectors is, is a 0 vector, so theta will not be defined and a dot p will be 0. So we say that if none of the vectors is 0 or all the vectors are the proper vectors, then dot product is the product of their moduli multiplied with cos of angle between them. Since we know about the dot product, that the dot product of two vectors is mod a mod b cos theta, why not to have the idea about other characteristics of dot product? Dot product is not closed. That is, if you take a dot product of A with B, the result is not the result. The output is not a vector because mod A is a magnitude, mod B is again a length magnitude and the value of cos theta is also a number. So how can the the number into the number will be a vector. That's why they say dot product is not a closed. That is, it does not obey the closure law. Hence, it is not a binary operation. This is just the value. This is just the output. Second, dot product is commutative. When we say commutative, it means we have nothing to do with pre or post. If we have two vectors, we can take any vectors as first and obviously the second one will be after that and we can take a dot product. The result will be the same because even if they go from clockwise to anti-clockwise, cos of minus theta is cos theta. Then the third on the list is the dot product is distributive over addition and subtraction. That is a dot b plus minus c is equal to a dot b plus minus a dot c. That is, you can take a dot product of one vector with the other two vectors by adding them or by taking that vector's dot product individually and then after that you add. So a dot b plus minus c is equal to a dot b plus minus a dot c. Moving further, I take you to the angle between the two vectors, which is very important for CBSE or equivalent examination. Angle between the two vectors can be derived with the basic formula or with the basic definition of dot product. What is A dot B? All of us know that it is mod A mod B cos theta. Simply get an expression for cos theta. What is cos theta? A dot B over mod A mod B. This implies that the angle between the two vectors will be given by cos inverse of A dot B over mod A mod B. If you need only the acute angle, then use the formula cos theta equals mod of A dot B over mod A mod B. Remember, the denominator, does, the denominator does not need any modulus sign because it is already positive. So this mod sign basically works for numerator. So whenever you need to present the acute angle 
or you are given that that you have to only write the acute angle take the mod value and then the expression becomes theta is equal to cos inverse of mod of a dot b over mod a mod b moving further if two vectors that is a is perpendicular to b if two vectors are perpendicular then their dot product is zero yes the, we, we assume that they are not the zero vectors but when they are perpendicular angle between them is 90 degrees and what is cos 90 you got that right mod a mod b into cos of 90 which is zero so zero into anything which is not zero is zero next but if a dot b is equal to zero then simply it doesn't mean that they are perpendicular vectors then there can be many possibilities if a dot b is equal to zero then either one of the vectors either a is zero or b is zero or both are zero or if we are sure that they are not zero then they will be perpendicular so if a is perpendicular to b then surely a dot b is zero but if a dot b is zero then either at least one of the vectors is zero or they go perpendicular they are perpendicular to each other next in the list is a dot a is mod a square here you can see that we have the same vectors so the angle between them is zero degrees so by opening the formula it is mod a mod a cos of zero and what is cos of zero cos of zero is one so what is mod a into mod a that becomes mod a square and next is if you take dot product of a vector with minus of a the angle becomes a pi and what is cos pi minus so with that it becomes minus of mod a square third or next in the list is that if three vectors are mutually perpendicular when we say mutually perpendicular we mean taking two at a time if a b c are mutually perpendicular they are also known as in the orthogonal system so the orthogonal system of vectors is when they go mutually perpendicular that is a is perpendicular to b b is perpendicular to c and c is perpendicular to a so a dot b and b dot c and c dot a everything will be zero can you give me the example of such a system yes your coordinate x's are in that system i j and k these are the three unit vectors and they are mutually perpendicular because x-axis is perpendicular to y and y-axis is perpendicular to z and z is perpendicular to the x-axis so what is i dot j yes that is zero what is j dot uh, k that is zero and what is k dot i zero so they form orthogonal system they form orthogonal system sometimes we call it orthogonals and many other call it orthogonal so pronunciation won't affect much unless you know the concept also because they are unit vectors i dot i is mod i square which is simply one similarly j dot j is mod j square which is one and k dot k is so these are the important characteristics for the scalar product working formula for the scalar or the dot product of two vectors let vector a b a1 i plus a2 j plus a3 k you know about the vector we have taken the vector with its components and b vector is b1 i 
plus b to j plus b three k. We also know that dot product is distributive. So I'll take each vector and multiply that with the other vectors. Say we take a base a one i and I'll take a dot product of a one i with all the other all the components of the other vector. So that becomes a one b one i dot i plus a one b two i dot j. Yes, we all know that this is zero because they are perpendicular and dot product will be zero. We'll write that later. A one b three i dot k. So this is done. Plus now I'm taking the second component. I'll take a dot product with all the components of the other vector. Same way. A two b one j dot i. A two b two j dot j. A two b3 j dot k plus the last operation is a3 b1 k dot i a3 b2 k dot j plus a3 b3 k dot k now tell me what is i dot i we already know through the last video we are at i dot i is 1 What is j dot j? That is again one. K dot k is one. What about j dot i? They being perpendicular, dot product will be zero. So the net result will be that all the terms will be zero except for these three terms, and they are separated by plus sign, plus sign, this plus sign. So the formula becomes a one b one. Plus a two b two plus a three b three. So you need to multiply x component of one vector with the x component of the other vector. Same way y with y, z with z, and simply add them for the scalar product. Isn't it easy? Find the dot product of two vectors. You are given a vector as i cap plus three j minus five k, and b vector as two i plus j plus k. The question is direct, direct, and very simple. We have to find the dot product, so we'll use the formula a one b one plus a two b two plus a three b three. That is simply multiplying x x component of the other vector. And then adding that with the product of the y components plus the z components, so a dot b is simply one into two plus three into one plus minus five into one. So you can add it, and what is the result? The result is coming zero. So if they say comment upon the result, we can say that the vectors are perpendicular. Otherwise, your answer is that the dot product is zero. Find lambda such that a is perpendicular to b, and we are given the values of the vectors with one unknown lambda. Well, a is perpendicular to b simply implies that a dot b is zero. So we'll take a dot product and we'll put that dot product as equal to zero, and we'll. Obviously, we'll have some equation containing that unknown, and the target will be solved to solve that equation to get lambda. So we begin with the basic working formula that we'll be uh, uh, be multiplying x component of one with the x component of the other, and y component and z component, and we'll add them, and we'll put that as equal to zero. So we should begin with given. A is perpendicular to B, so this implies that A dot B is equal to zero, and now we are taking a dot product. So dot product will go like this, and as we take a dot product, I and J and K will disappear because this is two lambda. And this is a forty-five. Fifteen into three is a forty-five. 
minus a 27 so this 2 lambda is equal to 27 minus a 45 which is uh, uh, which is 8 and uh, minus 18 and lambda is minus 9 so this is very simple question and it usually comes in the board exam lambda is minus 9 